This critically endangered Madagascar radiated tortoise is finishing covering her nest right now. So I got to dig up her eggs because they'll never hatch alone like this and put them into incubation. Uh, and then we're going to get to something really fun. We're going to put together the easiest, most simple tortoise enclosure ever. And uh, we're going to have some fun today. So let me grab these eggs and then we're going to get on over to the nature room and start putting this thing together. Four beautiful eggs from this hard-working mama. Can't wait to see the babies. There's so many different ways that people consider to be the right way to keep tortoises. You can go on and on and on about it. Sometimes going simple is better than doing something elaborate, and sometimes it's really what you have to do. A couple months back, if you click this link above me, you can watch the original video we did on the AV Tuvin tortoise house. In it, I suggested making some improvements. Well, the manufacturer has decided to do that, and they just sent us their new and improved tortoise house, which we're gonna set up and review for you guys. Okay, ow. <laughs> uh, don't do that. Okay, so the first thing I wanna bring up right here as I open this thing up is the size of it. This is not a very big enclosure. It's 38 inches by almost 23 inches by 13 inches as far as height goes. So you don't wanna to put too much in this and you also are absolutely not going to want to house a large animal in this. This enclosure, as I stated in the first video we did, is most suitable for juvenile tortoises. Now, why juvenile? Well, an adult is gonna be way too big to fit in this for life, and hatchlings need sufficient humidity, which you're not gonna gain with an enclosure like this that's made out of wood, particularly cedar wood. Now, remember, cedar wood, when an enclosure is made out of that, that is safe. You don't wanna use cedar bedding. So if you're thinking to yourself, well, I thought cedar wasn't safe for animals. The bedding is not. The wood, excellent choice. The color of this enclosure is a beautiful gray. I really like what they did here. A lot of times when you get these cedar frame or cedar based enclosures, they are just kind of, you know, the exposed wood or just um, stained a little bit, which they're nice too, but I really love that they stain this thing gray. As you can see in here, we love using gray enclosures. Love the smell of it too. So let's get these panels off to the side. Here's the base, and this is one of my favorite features of this tortoise house. They give you a plastic tray that is built into the cedar base. What's nice about this, it enables you to keep the substrate moist because you don't have to worry about the moisture in the bottom of the enclosure. A lot of the other ones that are similar to this design don't come with the plastic tray, so you gotta worry about moisture in it. And of course, tortoises, contrary to popular belief, absolutely need moisture in their substrate to stay healthy. So there you go. One of my favorite parts of this enclosure. Okay, they give you all the hardware and an instruction manual. Aha, here we go. Here is the new and improved feature for lighting. This was what I had an issue with in the very first review of this enclosure. They gave us, um, it was like a, a wooden bracket that just was fixed on the side and you couldn't swivel it or anything. And so when you went to open up the top of the enclosure, you would have hit the lamp. You would have actually had to remove the lamp and then you know, move it out of the way and open up the top. So um, we're gonna see how this one works out because this is a much more practical piece for lighting over any kind of reptile enclosure. Here's the beautiful lid with the screen on top. Okay, and we've got just our last few pieces here. We've got one of the side panels, whoop, both side panels. We've got the entrance to the hide the top for the end where the hide is with the hardware already partially installed and some more pieces to our light bracket. So let's put this box together. Just getting a little refresher here on how to put this together. And uh, you know, like I said, it's simple. So we're gonna attach C, D, and E panels to the front panel, which is this one. And of course your front panel has this plexiglass front. You just gotta take the plastic, uh, the protective plastic off it. And that is my second favorite thing about the AV2 and Tortoise House. So let's start with uh, C. 
Pegs go right in. You take the screws. Which ones though? Which ones do I want? The P2 screws. These are P2 screws. A word of caution, these are not the strongest screws, so you're really just supposed to use a regular Phillips head screwdriver. Um, I lack something called patience, so I'm using power tools. Dale, no power tools! Just do it easily, so you don't strip anything. And we're in. This is your middle panel, which is going to be the entrance to the hide. We're just going to put in the back panel. Okay, here's panel B. This is the other side. And as you can see, we are starting to look like a box. Flip it over, upside down, and we're going to put on the base. This wonderful base that allows us to keep moisture inside this enclosure. Now, this enclosure can actually be used for other reptiles such as young iguanas. We actually started the entire clutch of rhinoceros iguanas we hatched over the summer from Rocky and Blue, our adults, in one of these, and they really did awesome. You know, iguanas kind of have a similar ecology to tortoises in terms of the environments that they live in, especially ground iguanas, and even what they eat. So these are pretty effective in getting your baby iguana started, and they can't get out of it because it's got the screen lid and hardware that locks in place. All right, flipping it back over, and you know, this is a good time for me to bring up how wonderfully light this enclosure is. This thing, awesome to pick up, no problems. We are gonna go ahead and put the lids on. This unit has two lids. It has the screen lid, which is the main lid here, where the lighting can go, and then this entire portion is the hiding area for whatever you're gonna keep in here, which is crucial. Reptiles need to feel secure and have refuge at all times, because a stressed out reptile becomes a sick reptile very quickly, and stress, believe it or not, is the number one killer of reptiles, even captive bred ones. The whole thing behind this unit is the simplicity of it, which is awesome. You're really putting in very few screws to complete the whole installment. Um, and most of the screw holes are already pre-drilled for you, except for the hardware ones, which being that it's cedar wood, it just goes in so easily. See that? No problems. Just put a little bit of pressure and the screw goes right in. Remember, you don't want to go overboard, you don't want to split anything, and you don't want to strip the screw heads. All right, so we're putting the latches on. This part is all about you just eyeballing it, but again, it's very simple. You just want to make sure that it's going to be able to latch properly and try to keep it as level as possible. Put in one screw at a time and just kind of take a step back and look. Because especially, you know, if you're going to keep something like young lizards in here, like the young rhino iguanas, you want to make sure that it does latch securely so that they can't get out. Okay, moment of truth. We're going to start assembling the improvement they made based on my suggestions from the last time we reviewed this enclosure, and that is the new lamp holder, starting with little pieces of hardware. All right, this is the top part of the lamp holder. So you just simply screw it into this little platform that they made for it. Make sure it's flush and as even as possible. In you go. Thank you. 
Then we've got the bottom part. And what's gonna happen is, this is gonna you know, be in line with this, but it's gonna go on the bottom, uh, towards the bottom of the enclosure, and the tube is gonna fit over this that is going to be that L bracket that the light hangs down from. So what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna grab this part, which is the bottom part of the light tubing, and this will help you to line up the uh, bottom piece there. You want it to fit over that. And now, now you're perfectly lined up with both pieces, so you can go ahead and just screw this one in, and it won't be uneven. Okay, now we can put the rest of this thing together. So this thing really is an improvement from the last model. Uh, it's got pins, see that? So you can adjust the height of this holder. Just push it in. To me, that's gonna be too tall for what I wanna use. So I just go lower and lower until I am satisfied. Okay, one last piece, which also has an adjustable pin up here. This is where your light is actually going to hang from. Oops. And I'm gonna want it all the way over. Where are we? Where's the pin? Okay, so there is the holder. If you go to open the lid, you still come in contact with the lamp holder. That's a problem, right? Aha, not with this model. This one swivels out of the way. Now you could freely and easily and safely open up the top to the AV tube and tortoise house and check on your animals, change their water bowls, their food dishes, swap out or turn over substrate, or just get a good look at them. So bravo, AV tubing. That's a nice addition. You can move this a little bit if you want the lamp a little bit further towards the back. And also with this, this is still up pretty high. If you're using a high wattage bulb, then you can keep the lamp higher. Otherwise, you can, you can include a chain. And the chain will actually attach to this hook. Here's your hook right here. And uh, enable you to hang the light a little bit lower, which I'm going to show you what I mean right now. I do want to point out that, as you can tell, there's nothing that can really be done with the wire. Some of the other similar L bracket type light holders will have clips that will fit the wire into place and keep it as such. Um, so that's one recommendation I would make is that they could either maybe in a different model in the future add clips for the wire, but you could also wrap it like I'm doing here, or you could just simply zip tie it. You can get black zip ties so it blends in and you don't really notice it. But, you know, that's about the best you could do with that for now. Make sure you don't actually kink a wire though. That's an electrical disaster right there. This is what I was mentioning earlier. If you want the light to go lower, you can simply get a piece of chain, cut to size, attach it to the hook up here, and then also attach it to this piece that holds the light, and then you can get the light a little bit closer if you want, if your wattage isn't uh, that high. You know, if you're in a warmer room, you're obviously not going to want to blast whatever you have in this enclosure with like a 250 watt brooder lamp. You're going to want to use probably a 75 to 100 watt basking lamp. Um, and again, you can move this a little bit, and you can put slate rocks directly underneath it on top of the substrate that will enable the reptile that you're housing in here to reach optimal activity levels by getting as warm as it needs to. And also, you're gonna to wanna to use a light that has full spectrum. You're gonna want UVB and UVA, which means a mercury vapor bulb is gonna be your best bet there. Arcadia, Zoomed, uh, and other reptile companies make them, and uh, they are very good, but change them every three months instead of every six. Now, as I said, this is not a very big enclosure. If you need something to suffice for housing a tortoise or even maybe an iguana that's getting to be a little bit bigger before it needs a really large enclosure, uh, more space, you can actually join these together. You can get a second or even third AB tube enclosure and you can join them. And they send you the brackets that go on either side already with a couple extra screws. And when you look at the diagram right here, all it is is removing one side panel, putting two of them together, throwing these brackets on with some screws. You can reinforce it some more with yourself if you have wood glue or whatever else, and then you've got uh, way more room for the animal that you are housing. 
All right, now the fun part. We're gonna decorate this thing. We're gonna make it very standard for indoor tortoise housing, whether it's temporary or semi-long term. And uh, we're gonna use a substrate of both cypress mulch and eco earth. These are two safe substrates. I don't have any sand on me at the moment to add to this, but I always like to add some sand to a tortoise's enclosure because contrary to popular belief, as I told you guys in many, many of our videos, sand is a natural component found in just about every single tortoise's habitat across the globe and it is important. Don't believe all the impaction stuff, it's all in how you feed the animals, which you can see in many of our other videos. So this is really good stuff, it's safe, it retains moisture, makes for a semi-naturalistic ground for a lot of species, but you do have to keep up with it. You have to make sure it stays moist, no tortoise that is in a younger stage of life that's hatchling through juvenile can be subjected to prolonged periods of being too dry because that is what causes improper growth. All those pyramided tortoises you're seeing out there with the lumpy shells, that is from lack of sufficient hydration and actually an improper diet is secondary. However, of course, an improper diet has very detrimental effects internally on the tortoise. Here's how you also give your tortoises sufficient hydration. You give them a nice size water dish that they can not only drink from, but also fit their bodies into so they can soak because that is important and is something that all species will do in the wild. Remember, even desert or arid dwelling species seek out humidity and wet areas whenever they can. They've simply adapted to the environment that they live in, but they absolutely do still need sufficient levels of moisture and hydration as much as possible. So we got a nice size water dish in here, one that they are able to walk in and out of easily, and you just change that daily. No need to go fancy with a food dish. All you need is the lid to a Tupperware container or deli container. If you want to do something fancy, you're fine, but you can change these every day by just throwing them out or simply clean them. There you go. That's what your tortoise can eat off. All right, so even though we've got a fully hidden area, thanks to AB Tubin's design of this enclosure, I'm gonna make it a little bit more secure for tortoises because if you know anything about them, they love to just find the darkest, most secure areas where they can feel completely alone and unbothered. So I've got a little cave here, and I'm sticking this in the back corner, and I'm also going to throw some chopped straw back here for added cover. Remember, even the most vividly colored or marked tortoise species can blend in without problem in their natural environments because while they look conspicuous to us, they are adapted to stay hidden from predation. So by adding extra things like this, something as simple as chopped straw, you're making that tortoise feel safe and it can actually be pretty hidden. This is one of my personal little tricks that I love to use indoors for smaller tortoises or younger tortoises uh, because it adds both aesthetics, makes things great to look at, and it also adds even more cover for the animals. You just take a piece of flagstone or slate and a fake plant like this fern right here. Yes, they are perfectly safe and actually better in some cases than live because all tortoises are gonna do is mow down and eat anything live. And uh, you just do something like this here. Pick a corner. Pull the substrate back, jam this in, cover it back with the substrate, and now what you have is an area that the animal can go underneath but bask at the same time. Young tortoises, even adults, will do this. They will use the edge of some kind of vegetation in their habitat and just expose the right amount of their carapace to the sun. So they're staying hidden but getting warmed up at the exact same time. Take a couple more pieces of flagstone and place them on top of the substrate right underneath the basking light and you create a nice area that a tortoise can warm up fast on because the rocks are going to retain that heat. So here are the two inhabitants of this new AV tube and enclosure. These are two young radiated tortoises that we've been raising since they were hatchlings. They're gonna be three this year, and they're the perfect example of the size tortoise that will work in here. These are juveniles. They've passed the fragile stage. So humidity and moisture, while still important, are not as crucial as they are for a little fragile hatchling. 
These tortoises cannot spend their entire lives in one of these enclosures though. And even if you were to marry two of them together, like I showed you earlier, it's still not enough room for an adult. Radiated tortoises can grow to be upwards of 16 to 18 inches. So like I said in the last video we did with A.B. Tuvin, it's like a middle school for them. It's a time period for them to spend their juvenile years before they get to sub-adult size and then of course adult size. So for now, this enclosure is fine the way it is for these two but probably by next year, I would want to put two of them together to give them double that amount of size. These two right here are an example of what you don't want to house in one of these enclosures. And that is because babies, little hatchlings like these, require very high levels of humidity and moisture. So these do better in more of a closed chamber that we're going to end up doing another video on. So while they're in this fragile stage, something that's really open aired like this is not going to be sufficient enough for them unless you truly can keep up with keeping this thing humid and borderline damp for babies. Remember, baby tortoises seek out microclimates that are always humid and they spend 90% of their time in there only coming out to bask just a little bit when they're partially exposed, they do a little bit of grazing and then they go right back to hiding. It's not until they become much larger and less vulnerable that they venture out more and at that point the shell has grown pretty smoothly, if not perfectly, and humidity is less important. Once your tortoises start growing out of that three to four inch juvenile size that is suitable for one of these AV tubins, and they start approaching sizes like this with this little South African leopard tortoise, and I say little because this thing's gonna get huge, it's time to upgrade. It's time to start thinking about putting two of these together or even expanding all together. Obviously tortoises should get outdoor time, if not even hibernate out there, if they are a species that hibernates like a Herman's tortoise, for example. But for indoor keeping, these enclosures are suitable as long as you're doing it for the right age and size animal. Really any tortoise species that's in that three to four or even five inch bracket can work with one or two AV tubin enclosures, but some tortoises, such as the Northern Hemisphere's smallest species of tortoise, which is the Egyptian tortoise, can actually spend their entire lives in there. Just one male that may grow to be only three and a half, four inches can live in just one of these. But of course, if you could put two together, then you could do a pair or maybe even three. But all together, this is a pretty cool unit. We are constantly evolving here. We're always doing more in this room, our nature room, our reptile room. We're always building enclosures, making sure animals are set up properly. And um, these units really come in handy because you know what? If they're not going to be a permanent fixture, maybe you're a rescue. Maybe you need kind of a hospital area for certain animals. And these enclosures are great because they're compact. They keep the animals safely contained in a humane manner. And you know, you even have visual barriers here. So this isn't like a fish tank where the animal is constantly stressed out by trying to get out because it doesn't understand the concept behind glass. So I want to say to AB Tuvin, thank you. Because it's very rare that a company that makes any product will take advice and actually make improvements. All I had to do was mention what I didn't like about the light stand that they used in the original uh, design for this and they changed it immediately, sent it right out and asked us to do another review. So that says a lot about a company. That means that they're always trying to evolve and always trying to do better for the animals and the people taking care of the animals. Whether you're a rescue, a zoo, a private breeding facility, a conservation entity, you want to be able to make sure that you are taking care of your animals as best as you can and keeping them safe and secure, that's first and foremost. So these really are solid units that um, they go a long way. The fact that you could put two together, you can even put them outside, all great stuff. So if you want to get yourself an AV Tuvin or two tortoise house, use the code that we're going to put in the description of this video to get a discount and get this product right away. So maybe you could write your own review or just start getting your experience with it for your animals. But I was clear about what you should house in this. If you start trying to house hatchling tortoises, you might run into problems unless you really can keep them humid and moist at all times. So there you go, that's the AV Tube and Tortoise House. They have plenty of other animal enclosures you can check out. And don't forget, the link to purchase one of these is in the description, so go check that out as soon as you're done watching this.